My name is Armin and I'm a product specialist at Notch. In this tutorial, we'll talk about Chroma Key Node and we're gonna try it out in several scenarios. First of all, we're gonna see how it deals with a cloth. Then we're gonna work with some glasses and transparency. And the last setting we're gonna do is going to be a setup where we are taking out the mask of the unwanted space in the footage. Okay, let's get started. Uh, as you see, there's quite a few layers for us to work with. Three of these layers, the black ones, are the finished setups, and the gray ones are the start points. That's exactly where we're heading now. That's what we're going to use for this tutorial. So I'm pressing on the first layer, Cloud Start, and let's talk about the nodes that we have here in the setup. First of all, I think I'm going to disable this image 2D that is running with the green screen footage, and I'm going to talk about this image 2D that we have here in the back. So this is just a little tile setup that will help us out with seeing better what's going on while we're keying things with the chroma keyer. Right, so I'm bringing back the image to d with the video loader, so I'm pressing Ctrl-1 to enable it back, and I'm going to add the chroma key node. So I'm going to apply it straight on the video loader. And I'm quite happy with the initial results. Obviously, we will treat properties and make it better as we progress. But before we address any of these settings, I would like to mention that it's very important to keep the consecutive order of operations when uh, working with the chroma key node. It's very important to first set a very neat clean play generator, then uh, define the fully keyed areas, so on and so forward until you arrive to the last setting, which is smoothing and refinement. Now, with that said, I think we're more than ready to start. Let's grab the first panel available for us, Clean Play Generator, and let's make some alterations. I think I'm going to start by checking out the plate pixels. There we go. Now we can preview the generated clean plate. So our task here is to make as smooth of a surface as we can. We literally want to produce a nice green uh, plate for a referral. Okay, I'm quite happy with this. I think I'm going to keep the settings as they are now. So this property is not restricted to just green color. As you see, generate mode has several options available. So we can go for the auto generate from greens, blues, or we can actually pick and choose the color ourselves with the color picker. So that's the third property here. And then we have three options. Should it be color picker, windows color picker, or picker? that we can just bring on the screen and define the green ourselves. Now, in this case, I think I'm going to go back to the initial setup, the auto generate from greens, because it definitely works for me here. Right, so with that said, I'm moving on to the fully keyed areas property, and I'm going to tick on show fully keyed areas. I'm actually quite happy with the default setting right here. I think I might as well leave it very close to what it was from the get-go. So this bracket right here defines the actual chroma color. So anything that is marked up red will not be further tweaked or processed. It's just going to be regarded as fully keyable, fully green or fully blue area. As you see, we have some hair going on and we have some cloth. We definitely want to further address all of these edges and the hair. So I'm happy with the setting. I'm going to tick off show fully keyed areas and I'm going to move on to the solid areas. Let's tick on show solid areas. I think I'm going to increase the saturation difference a little bit here. Let's preview. Yeah, this is quite okay. I'm quite happy with this. So uh, this bracket right here defines exactly where uh, is our talent or an, an object. So basically, this is uh, something that Notch refers as a solid, and it will not further tweak or alter it. So in many respects, it's quite similar to what we did with the fully keyed areas. It's just in fully keyed areas, we define what should definitely be keyed out. And here we are defining what definitely should stay on the screen. Let's preview. Right, I think I'm quite happy with this setting. I think I'm going to move on to the next bracket, which is transparency and edges. So transparency and edges is responsible for contrast adjustments. Just think of it as a overall contrast setting for the node. So we can harden the transparency amount uh, and we can further tweak it with the threshold setting. Now, in my case, I think I'm going to leave it in the default because I want to retain the transparency here. Now, there might be instances where you have footage that has a little green one pixel outline. Should that happen, we have a setting to address it, and that's Shrink Transparency Edge. 
So that literally reduces that one pixel or several pixel outline, and you can further tweak it with the shrink transparency edge passes. Now we can clip out the black or white as well if we choose so. But to be honest, I think I'm quite happy with the default settings right here. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Right, then we have a spill suppression bracket. So let's start by talking a little bit about a global suppression. So global suppression is a color mixer. So whatever notch sees a uh, green, it will apply this color mixer and it will blend between red and blue trying to key out that uh, leftover green area or areas. Now in our case, I don't think it's necessarily mandatory, so I'm just gonna keep it off. Next setting we have in this bracket is reflection suppression. In our case, we don't have any specularities or reflections, so I think we can just leave it off. We have another setting in this tutorial where we are dealing with glass, so this will come extremely handy. And then we have the last bracket, smoothing and refinement. The first property here is temporal smoothing. So temporal smoothing uh, helps your GPU to run faster. Basically with temporal smoothing enabled, you decrease the load on your GPU and the calculation and processing happens much, much faster. Now it's not a mandatory setting to uh, enable, but I always recommend to do that because it definitely helps with your GPU performance. Right, further down we have smooth transparency, so I think I'm going to take that on and I'm going to increase it quite high. Let's set it to 20. I see a definite increase in quality here. I see it's much smoother and the cloth looks much, much better. The next setting that we have is smooth color, so I'm going to increase that quite high as well. And there we go. So with this last bracket turned on, our cloth looks much, much better, much slicker. Right, I think we're done with this setting right here. Let's move on to the second one, liquid. So this is more or less the shot that we're after. Let's go to the starting point. Let's add chroma key node and let's make some tweaks to it. Again, just like in the previous setting, here we have two image 2D setups. So the back image 2D is just a tile generator producing this chessboard pattern. I'm bringing back the image 2D. And now I'm going to bring in a chroma key node and apply it straight to the video loader. Okay, this looks quite all right from the start. Obviously, we want to make some tweaks. And again, we're going to keep the consecutive order of operations. We're going to start with clean plate and we're going to progress through all the settings as we did in a previous sample. Right, so let's enable show contributing clean plate pixels. And let's try to make some alterations and make this better. I think I'm going to bump it up a little bit higher here. Let's see the weighting. That maybe could be somewhere here. Let's preview how it looks as a solid green. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this. This looks quite flush. I'm going to play it back. Yep, this looks good. I think I'm going to keep these settings as they are here. Good. Let's move on to the next bracket, fully keyed areas. Let's stick on show fully keyed areas. I think I'm going to increase the settings here. Let's play back again. This is a little bit more complex shot, so we definitely want to see uh, these greens here. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with this. I'm going to leave it like that now. Uh, third bracket, solid areas. Let's see if we want to make some alterations here. Yeah, I think we can definitely give a little bit more solid by decreasing the threshold maybe somewhere here. So this is definitely a fine tuning game where you just have to tweak every little setting little by little until you are actually happy with the results. Okay, I think this actually helped for us. That's good. And then we have transparencies and edges. Now, again, as mentioned before, this is more or less the overall contrast setting for the node. I think here we want to change the amount a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at one Point three, for instance. Let's see. Yeah, this looks quite okay. Uh, I don't think I need uh, to shrink the transparency edge. I don't have any green outline around this glass, so I'm quite happy here. I'm going to leave it as is. Let's preview. Yeah, this definitely works. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, let's go for spill suppression now. I'm going to enable the global suppression to get rid of that extra leftover green color. So it would be replaced with a mix of uh, red and blue. That's a little bit better. Now let's stick on reflection suppression. Yep, that definitely fixes the setting as we have some reflections going on here. 
but I think we can reduce it a little bit. So maybe something like 0 0.08. This looks quite slick. This is quite good. I like this. Right. I think I'm going to leave the setting as is now. And now moving on to the last bracket, smoothing and refinement. As mentioned before, I do want to preserve uh, compute power, so I'm going to enable the temporal smoothing. Obviously, it's not necessary because I'm running quite good numbers here. I can see the FPS count here in the bottom of the screen, just next to the time counter. So parent FPS is oscillating from 400 to 900 FPS. That's great. But I will keep it on just for the good measure. Then we have a smoothing transparency. I think I'm going to tick that on and I'm going to increase it quite high to something like 20. And smoothing color. Let's do the same. Let's preview. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. I think I'm going to leave the settings that we just created as they are now. Okay, I think we're ready to move on to the third and final setup of uh, this tutorial, the background masking. Now, there might be instances where you have a footage that has some undesired information on the sides, bottom, or on the top. Like in this case, we literally would like to get rid of all of this unnecessary information. So how do we set it up? Well, first of all, we need a chroma key node. So I'm going to add that straight to the video loader. I see that it's working. Great. Now let's talk about masking out the unwanted information. We can do that with the curve mask generator. So I'm grabbing a curve mask. Uh, and if I hover over the inputs available for me in the chroma key, I will see that the third input is garbage mat image. That's exactly where we want to pipe in the newly added curve mask node. Now, before we make any alterations to this node, let's make sure that it's a little bit closer in its resolution and setup to this viewport. Okay, so now it's 1920 by 1080. That's great. Now I want to define the space that I want to keep. So I'm just going to add several points to this curve mask. There we go. And I'm going to close off the Splite. And now if I start playback, I see that this node is the exact opposite of what I wanted it to do. And that is because we need to invert this setting. So I'm going to grab invert post effect. There we go. And I'm going to apply it straight to the curve mask. Now, invert does not have alpha selected by default. So I'm just going to tick that on. And all of a sudden we have this curve mask doing exactly what we wanted, keying out the background that we didn't desire. Right, so with this done, I think I might as well make this image 2D a little bit bigger. So we see the talent a little bit better. There we are. I think this definitely works. So I think now we're definitely ready to address some settings in a chroma key node. So let's start again with the clean plate generator. Let's see what we have here as a available green color. Let's check the actual green. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with these settings. This looks quite flush. I am definitely ready to move on to the next bracket, fully keyed areas. Let's define those. Yep, this works. I think we are quite, quite good here. I can even decrease a little bit the clean plate inclusion threshold. Right, let's move on. Let's preview the solid areas. Okay. Yeah, this works. This looks quite okay. Uh, transparencies and edges. Let's see if we should increase something here. I think we should. And let's harden or let's shrink the transparency edge. So this is the setting that I mentioned in the first sample. We have a little bit of a green outline around our talent. So I'm just going to take that on and get rid of it. Maybe I'll clip out the black a tiniest bit. Yeah, I think this definitely works. Then we have spill suppression. I'm going to tick on global suppression. That's looking much better already. Okay. Now we don't have any reflections, so I'm just going to leave this bracket right here uh, off. 
quite happy with what we generated so far. I'm going to tick on temporal smoothing and I'm going to add some smoothing and smooth color. Now I might want to add a little bit more uh, iterations here or passes. I think I'm going to bump it quite high to say 15 by 15. And there we go. Now we're more or less set. We're more or less ready. Okay, so let's round it up. Uh, in this tutorial, we've spoken about several scenarios, several setups. First, we addressed uh, a setting with the cloth. Uh, then we addressed a setting with the specularity or with the glass. And then we made sure about how to get rid of the unnecessary space in your green screen setups. I hope you found this tutorial handy. And see you in the next one.